Welcome to EE544 on Tuesday, March 11, 2014. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Let's uh, continue our discussion uh, from last time. Uh, we started talking about uh, modulation techniques, and uh, we said, uh, let's review it quickly, we said that modulation uh, is required to uh, provide for two things, uh, majorly, majorly, two things, which is what? The first one is to allow us to use a uh, size of an antenna, which is what? Which is reasonable. Remember, the size of the antenna is inversely proportional to the what? To the frequency of radiation. So if the frequency is high, the size of the antenna will become what? Smaller and smaller. And the other reason for uh, modulation is to allow for what? Multiple access, to allow several sources to be transmitting at the same time, but using what? Different uh, frequencies. In, in this example, it gives the impression that modulation is just simply the uh, process of converting or up-converting the, up the the, uh, the baseband spectrum to the what? To the uh, baseband, to, to the passband spectrum, or to the RF, centered around RF. But you have to remember that the modulation techniques are not all of them just basically what? Shifting, as I, as I will show you in just a second. For example, let me show you before we get into the, into the detail. I want you to see this. This is the original spectrum. You follow me or not? That's the baseband spectrum. Look at the FM and look at the PM. Is it, is it only this one shifted or is it something else? Something else, we have what? A large number of what? Sidebands. This one is the AM. Do you see in the AM, what did I do? I just shifted this one to be centered. And instead of centered around zero, it will be centered around what? Some carrier frequency. But not all modulation is like that. Some of them will create what? Side walls. Did you get my point or not? I will show you that in just a second. Oh, <laughs> now we said again, as I told you, how do you classify the modulation technique? You classify it as analog or what? Digital. You look at the source. If the source is what? Analog and there was no what? There is no digitization of the source. You don't use A to D. A to D stands for what? Analog to digital convergence. So which means what? The source remain analog. So the, the modulation we call it what? Analog modulation. If the source is digital, we call it what? digital modulation. Now, remember, when I say the source, I mean either the source is digital by nature or it's what? Analog and converted to what? To digital using A to D. It's still a what? It still became a what? A digital source. We call it a what? Digital modulation. And we will survey all of these modulation techniques as we move along, as we move along. But you need to keep in mind that this course is not a course on a modulation technique per se. So we are not going to go into detailed analysis into each one of them. But we definitely, we will be looking at what? The mathematical model and the traits, which means what? Traits means what? The pros and the what? And the cons. When do you decide to use this modulation technique? When do you use that? And so on and so forth. Okay. We started, first of all, with the amplitude modulation. And in the amplitude modulation, this is the carrier signal. We are going to change the what? We are going to change the amplitude. Clear, we are going to change the amplitude based on what? Based on the baseband signal. This is the baseband signal. Is it changing fast or slow? Uh, slow, why? Because it's a baseband signal, whereas the carrier is changing what? Much faster. So if you look at this, if you multiply them together, what do you end up with? You end up with a modulation like this, which is what the amplitude is changing. What did we call this dotted region? Dotted region, what did we call it? 
We called it the envelope. And keep in mind, the envelope is always what? Positive. And this is just a mirror image of it. The envelope is what? It's positive. Clear? Now, the mathematical model, let's see if you remember the AM for AM. The mathematical model was what? Was X of T equal to what? A times what? 1 plus mu. M of T times what? Cosine 2 pi FCT plus times set. This is constant. Constant. And this one is also what? Also constant. The changing is the what? Is the amplitude. This is A sub C. Clear? And this one, we called it the what? The modulation index. The modulation index. And for simple what? For simple detection using what is known as what? Envelope detector. What was the condition of mu? I'd say mu has to be what? Are you following or not? Has to be what? Less than one. If a mu is more than one, what are you going to have? What are you are going to have what? You are going to have? Uh, uh, you cannot use what? You cannot use uh, envelope detection. Otherwise, let me write it. Otherwise, we need what? We need coherent. Another name for coherent? Synchronous detector. This signal, we call it the what? The AM signal. AM signal. If you remove this one, do you see this one? If you remove this one, which means what is the signal becomes? AC, M of T, cosine 2 pi, FCT plus theta. We call it what? Double sideband suppressed carrier. If you remove this one. If this one is there, we call it just what? The conventional AM. Question. Uh, AC here, is it changing or fixed? This one? AC here. This one? Yeah. No, this one is changing. It's already, this one is fixed, but the overall amplitude is what? It's changing because it's a function of M of T. This one is the what? Is the carrier amplitude. This one is the amplitude. The unmodulated. 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 Carrier amplitude. Amplitude. This one is fixed, but the changes is what? It's because M of T is changing. M of T is changing. Okay. We also derived this one last time. What was the efficiency? The efficiency was equal to what? Mu square over what? Two plus what? Mu, uh, uh, I made a mistake. Huh? Yeah, it's a mu square over what? Two plus mu square. Now, remember, if mu is less than one, the efficiency, what is the best efficiency if you want to use envelope detector? It's one third. So the maximum efficiency is what? One third. Now, what does that mean? What does one third mean? First of all, how do I define efficiency? How do I find the efficiency? It's, it's, uh, 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 if you want to write it, power efficiency is what? The useful power. In what bands? In what bands? Both bands. Clear? In both bands. The upper side band and the what? Lower side band divided by what? The total power. Clear? So when we say one third, what does it mean? It means most of the time you are spending your power transmitting the what? The discrete carrier component, which carries no what? Which carries no information by itself. Clear? Okay. How much was the bandwidth? How much was the bandwidth? The bandwidth is equal to what? Two times what? If, or or let's, let's write it this way. The bandwidth, the AM, AM is equal to what? Two times what? B. What is this B? The Baseband. Bandwidth. Remember, if this is the spectrum, if this is the baseband, this is M of F, this is F, B minus B. What am I sketching? What am I sketching? This is the spectrum of the baseband signal. What is X of F look like? What is X of F? X of F is the what? Is the spectrum of the modulated carrier, which is the output of the modulator, what will it be?
What is this? What is this one? This one. That's a what? A discrete component at what? At F sub C. Again, if you are using what? Double sideband suppress carrier, you will not see this impulse. You will not see it. Double sideband, how, what is it? Double sideband suppress carrier, what is X of T? Give it to me. It's what? A, M of T, cosine. There is no mu. Uh, the mu is only applicable to what? To the AM. No, it's not a matter of incorporated. It's a ma the question is what? What happened to the mu? My dear, listen to me. In DSPSC, the double sideband suppressed carrier, you are not going to be able to use what? Envelope detection. You have to use what? Coherent detection. Do you understand that or not? So we don't talk about the modulation index anymore. Clear? Okay, so it's AM of P cosine 2 pi FCT plus what? Say it. This, you will not find what? You will not find an impulse in here. What is the bandwidth? The bandwidth is what? It's 2 times what? B. Clear? Now, this is what do we call this? This one is called the upper side band. This one is called the what? The lower side band. How about here? Here. Uh, it's, uh, uh, th this one is the what? This is the upper side band. This one is the what? Lower side band. Clear? The upper side band and the lower side band, each of them, do they have the same information? That they have the same information. This is not the same as the IQ modulation that we'll talk about it in a minute. Did you understand what I just said or not? That, that's, that's a crucial point that I don't want you to forget. The IQ modulation, the information, the I and the Q channel are not holding the same what? The same information. And here they are holding the same information, which means what? If I get rid of this, the lower sideband, and the lower sideband, when at the receiver, when I want to bring them back together, am I recovering this? I will recover this. So I don't need the double sideband. I need only what? One sideband. So we call it what? SSBSC. Did you get my point or not? Okay, but what is the problem with SSBSC? How come the radio, AM radio, is not based on SSBSC? We would have, by the way, think about it this way. We would have been able to support double the number of what? AM channels if we can get rid of one of them. Did you get my point or not? If we can get rid of one of the band. So why don't they do it? They do it is that you need a what? An extremely sharp what? Sharp filter to get rid of what? To get rid of the one of the what? One of the one of the band. Did you understand that or not? Or, by the way, can you tell me what does this look like? This one and this one. And the center is F sub C in between. Huh? No, no. What does it look like? Something that we talked about earlier. Come on, come on. In the image. That's the image of rejection. Who is, the, who is the image of this guy? The image of this guy is this guy. You follow me or not? So you need to use what? You need to use the Hartley receivers or the Weaver receivers to get rid of the what? To get rid of the image. But that will increase the complexity of your AM receiver. You want your AM receiver to be cheap stuff. You don't want to use all of these sophisticated types of architecture for AM radio. AM radio is, is, is by the way, I doubt if anybody, unless if you are a news junkie, in other words, you hear, you want to hear news and stuff. Most of the people in their car, they hear what? They hear FM radio. The AM radio, they are not interested in. Clear? The information, by the way, is modulated on the amplitude, and that explains why when you go, for example, inside the tunnel or something like that, the degradation in the quality becomes what? Becomes very clear. In other words, you can tell that degradation is happening. Because of what? Because the information is on the amplitude and because of the obstacles, the, the, the material that the, the, uh, that the tunnel is made of, it will result in what? Will result in the degradation or losses in the information. Clear? No response. Clear? Okay. We went through all of this uh, last time. The, the, by the way, this is a coherent demodulation. What is another name? One more time. Synchronous. In what sense it is synchronous? 
we need to generate at the receiver, at the receiver, a carrier signal, which is what? Synchronized with the transmitter carrier signal at both the frequency and the what? And the phase. We will see that later on. We can do that through the use of what? Through the use of what is known as PLL. PLL stands for what? Phase lock loop. But that, again, will increase the what? The complexity of your AM receiver. We would like our AM receiver to be as simple as possible. Clear? Okay, so we use the, 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 the envelope detector. Then we calculated the what? The power, which is the what? The peak average to, uh, sorry, the peak to average power ratio. Clear? Let me give you one more example on the power, so just to make sure that you understood it carefully. Power example, just an example, quick example. Assume X of T consists of the sum of two tones, A cosine, 2 pi, F1 of T plus B cosine, 2 pi, F2 T. Assume that we do have this, a two-tone signal. This is a two-tone signal. Now, let's assume that F1 and F2 are what? Harmonically related. What does that mean? When I say harmonically related, it means F2 is equal to what? M times what? F1. And M is an integer, or vice versa. Did you answer what I just said, harmonically related? M is an integer. Okay. And the question is what? Find the uh, power for this signal. Find the power of this signal. Then, by the way, then assume A is equal to what? B. Question. Does A have to be equal to B? The A does not have to be equal to B. Did you understand that or not? Yes or no? Okay. The reason I'm showing you this example, because we are going to use this example as the centerpiece of what is known as what? OFDM. OFDM stands for what? The orthogonal frequency division. <coughs> Excuse me. Orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. In orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, we are going to be transmitting multiple what? Subcarriers. Multiple subcarriers. And they are what? Harmo orthogonal. Harmonically related, if you would like. Clear? So I need you to understand this uh, very quick, uh, easily. Okay, now, let's start with a simple one. What is the average power? Now, remember, they are what? Harmonically related, which means what? Which means, uh, first of all, what is the definition of average power? Average power is the power in what? Over what? Over a long period of time. Are you following me or not? Yes or no? Question. Is this periodic? This periodic. Is this periodic? This periodic. Is the sum periodic? Yes, because they are what? Harmonically related. Let me ask a question. True or false? The sum of any periodic signals are periodic. True or false or not necessarily? The sum of two periodic signals is also periodic. Not necessarily. Are you following that? Not necessarily. The frequencies need to be what? needs to be related by the ratios of the frequencies needs to be related by what? By integer is not every periodic signal and what? Another, in other words, let me give you an example. Suppose I have this cosine 2 pi t. What is the frequency here? 1. Yes. Plus what? What is the frequency here? 1 over 2 pi. Did you get this or not? Is this, is this some periodic? The sum will not be periodic. Did you get my point or not? Just because this one is periodic, this one is periodic. But there is no common what? There is no common term between them that we can find what? We can find uh, the periodicity. But if I put here, instead of cosine 2 pi, I put what? Cosine 4 pi. Will this one be periodic? This one will be periodic because the frequencies, you can find a common multiplier of both of them. Yes? Okay, good. Keep that in mind. What is it? Now, since they are harmonically related, they are orthogonal, yes? Which means what? The middle term will be equal to what? Zero. What middle term? When I say middle term, what middle term? It's, I need to what? Square. Remember, the, the power is proportional to the what? Integral of what? X square. Yes? You are losing me here or not? I don't want to go to step by step. By inspection, you should be able to tell me that. Did you understand what I just said or not? 
the middle term, when you integrate the middle term, because the two frequencies are what? Harmonically related, integrating over one period, the answer will be what? Zero. So what do you get? Over what? Two plus what? B squared over what? Two. Did you get this or not? Okay. Now, the peak power. How do I get the peak? Well, remember, the average power is what? The integral of x squared t dt from 0 to t, 1 over t. Did you get this or not? Where t is the period. What is the peak power? The peak power is a proportional to what? The magnitude. Square. Yes or no? Okay. So what do I need? I need to what? I need to square x square of t. Yes or no? And I need to figure out what? What is the maximum? So after you find this, I'm not going to do it for you. After you find this, what do you do? And you equate it equal to what? Zero. Yes or no? What are we trying to find here? The peak or the maximum. You agree? You will find it what? You will see that maximum is at t equal to what? 2 and pi or n equal to what? 0, 1, 2, and so on and so forth. Yes or no? So if we pick n equal to 0 and plug it in this equation, n equal to what? 0, and you plug it in the equation, you will end up with what? n equal to 0, you will end up with what? P peak. Say that again. A plus, the A plus B, very good. A plus B, the whole thing what? Square. Clear? Clear? No response. Yes or no? A plus B, the whole thing square, which means the what? The power is what? 10 log A plus B the whole thing square divided by what? A square over what? 2. B square over what? 2. And if A, if A is equal to B, then the power will be equal to what? A equal to B. What do I have? Uh, A equal to B. This is what? A square. This is what? Is 10 log 4, which is uh, 60 B. Did I make a mistake? Log 4 is what? It's 2 square. So that's what? 20 log 2. Log 2 is what? 0.3. 20, that's 6 dB, around 6 dB. Clear? Clear? Okay. Now, in general, by the way, in general, and we will see this when we get to the obvious, in general, if we have n tones harmonically related, n tones harmonically related, Harmonically related. And you will see that the power is approximately equal to 20 log n. But we'll see that when we get to the OFDM shortly. That's on Thursday, possibly on Thursday. Huh? No, this, by the way, there is no modulation in both. There is no modulation in this example. In this example, the what? The signal consisted of what? Two, some of what? Two tones. We did not talk about modulation. Modulation is the one that I assigned it for the extra credit, which you did not submit. Did you follow me or not? Some of you did submit, which I will what? Check it out tonight or tomorrow. Did you get my point or not? Yes? Okay, good. Now. Let's get back to the, did you understand it? Okay, a question. The more the power is, the higher the power, what does it mean? The higher the power, what does it mean? It means that the amplitude is what? It's changing. It's a what? It's a non-constant envelope, which requires at what? Requires us to design our power amplifier to operate in which region? In the linear region. Otherwise, we are going to get what? A whole bunch of what? Side lobes at the output of the amplifier. So... Side lobes. So, what is the problem with the side lobes? Side lobes is going to be what interference? What type? The adjacent channel interference on, on other channels. Clear? Clear? Okay, good.
by the way, if we, if, if we are going to be operating in the linear region of the power amplifier, it means what? It means that we need to back off from the what? From the peak power. Did you get this or not? Which means what? You are not operating the power amplifier at, at whatever full efficiency is. When I say, by the way, full efficiency, the efficiency to begin with is not 100%, as we will see. Did you get this or not? But it means what? You are, op you are backing off. So when you hear the word back off, that means what? The modulation is not constant envelope. You need to what? You need to back off the power amplifier uh, to, uh, to support what, or to get into the linear region. Clear? Okay. Frequency, FM. Let's review it very quickly. FM. Okay. What is the mathematical model? X of T equal to A cosine 2 pi FCT plus what? 2 pi. <coughs> KF, this modulation, uh, it's a modulation uh, factor here, integral between 0 and T, M of tau, D tau. Close the bracket. <coughs> what is this M of T? M of T is called the what? The modulating, modulating ING. The modulating, this is the what? This is the baseband. Clear? This is the carrier frequency. This is A, A sub C. Is the amplitude constant? Uh, the amplitude is constant. You follow me or not? What do I call this? This whole thing. This whole thing. From here to here. We call it what? The phase angle. This is called the what? The phase angle. What is the instantaneous frequency? Fi of t. Why is it a function of time? What, first of all, what do I call this instantaneous frequency? Why is it a function of time? It is a function of time because it depends on the time here. Are you following me or not? What is it equal to? Still waiting. No. No. No, I want you to give me the definition first of all. How do you get the instantaneous frequency? Definition first, before you give me the answer. You are giving me the answer. I want definition first. One over what? Two pi times what? The derivative of the phase angle. Agree? Agree? No response. Agree? Okay. And what is it equal to? Differentiate this with respect to what? T and divide by what? Two pi. So what do I get? F sub C plus two pi cancels. Differentiation with the integration cancels out. Yes? And what do I get? I get KF, M of what? M of T. Clear? This is FI of T. Is it changing or it's not changing? Is it changing or not changing? Changing. What do I call this? F sub C is the free running carrier frequency. Free running means what? No modulation. No modulation. Yes or no? What do I call delta F? In a minute, I will introduce delta F. Delta F is the maximum frequency deviation. Maximum frequency deviation from who? From who? From the F sub C, from the carrier frequency. Clear so far? Clear so far? Okay, good. Now, so this one is, uh, is, the, is the first equation. Now, let's take a special case. Consider M of T to be equal to what? A cosine, A sub M cosine 2 pi f m t what is this called single tone modulation what is the spectrum of this guy what is the spectrum of this guy the spectrum of this guy is two delta functions located at what plus or minus what f sub m yes or no oh. yes or no what is the what is the, uh, uh, x of t in this case? X of t equal to what? A sub c cosine two pi f c t. What do I have here? Help me. M of t is this. So when you integrate, what is it? One over two pi f m is the derivative. The two pi cancel with this. Yes or no? So what do I end up with? A m times what? KF over what? 
F sub M, yes, times what? Did you lose me? Did you, did you answer where the sign came from? Yes. Uh, the sign is the integration of a what? Of a cosine. What happened to this 2 pi? And the 2 pi cancels with what? 2 pi. Fm is in the denominator, and the amkf is in the numerator. Clear? Amkf is what? Is defined as delta f, which is what? Which is the peak frequency deviation. What does it depend on? What does the peak frequency deviation depend on? It's just KF, it's just a what? Modulation uh, constant. What does it depend on? The amplitude of your what? Of your baseband signal. Did you get this or not? <clears throat> yes or no? So as you increase the amplitude of your baseband signal, you are what? You are deviating farther from what? Farther from the from the carrier frequency. Did you get this or not? Yes or no? This is crucial. I need you to understand this. We'll get to it in a minute. Okay. Which means what? Uh, also, the delta F over some F sub M is called what? <coughs> beta. And beta is the what? Is the FM modulation index. So what is the equation becomes? X of T equal to what? AC cosine 2 pi FCT plus beta sine 2 pi FMT. Close the bracket. Did you get this or not? Remember, the modulation right now is in the what? In the angle rather than in the amplitude. <clears throat> yes or no? Cannot hear you. Okay. Let's see if you can help me here. Before modulation. What was, before modulation, what was the average power in the carrier signal? Answer me. A, <coughs> AC square over what? Over 2. <coughs> yes? After modulation. What is the power? in modulated carrier. Still waiting. Agree? What happened? What happened? So you are telling me that the information did not need any power? What happened? I'm still waiting. I need an answer before I show it to you. The, the average power before modulation was a square over 2. After modulation, it was what? a square over 2. Is it the same power? So what does that mean? It means the sidebands does not have any power? What does it mean? The Say that again? No, I am not talking about power efficiency whatsoever. I am trying to ex you to explain to me if this power is the same as this power, <clears throat> what happened? What happened? The information did not need any power. What, what happened? AC huh? Say that again. That AC what AC? Uh, you, you mean this? No. The in the so what does that mean? It means I don't need power to send those side bats? What do you mean the, the modulation is in the frequency? It means what? I don't need any power? The, this, what I'm trying to tell you is what? Let me jump a little bit. Let me jump a little bit. <clears throat> this is the what? This is the input signal. Yes? What does the spectrum look like? The spectrum look like this. We already agreed on it. Yes or no? <clears throat> yes or no? At what? F sub C minus F sub C. After modulation, this is what you will create. I will show you this equation in just a second. Yes? What is the total power here? Total average power here before modulation. A square over 2. Do we agree? What is the total power after modulation? A square over 2. What happened? That's my question. 
What happened? Before the modulation, all the power was contained in what? In the discrete component at what? F sub C. <clears throat> yes or no? After modulation, what happened? The carrier frequency, the carrier component, the carrier component, which means what? At F sub C, its power goes what? Down. And the difference will be what? Allocated to the what? To the side bands. Such that the total is what? Is the same. Did you get my point or not? Okay, let's see. So that I can show it to you. Let's put this one equation one. Did you get my point here or not? Yes? Did you get my point? In other words, if the question tells you what is the power of the carrier component at the output of the modulator, is it this? It's not this. It's, it's much less than this. Did you get this or not? If it is this, if this one, <clears throat> if this one, it, <clears throat> if this one is the power in the carrier component, then it means what? The all the side lobes did not have any power associated with them. Yes. So this means that the peak power in the default modulation is bigger than absolute modulation. We are not talking about peak power here. We are talking about average power here. Peak power in what? When you say peak power, in what? In what signal? In the, in, see, because before modulation, it's only at a single frequency. So if you are looking at what? At the peak power, <clears throat> before modulation, it's what? It's basically A square. Do you follow me or not? It's basically A square because you are going to what? You are going to look at the peak at a very short period of time. It's just A square. It's not A square over two. Did you get this or not? Yes or no? In the after modulation, the carrier power is no longer what? AC. It will become different, which I'll show you how it will become. Did you get this or not? Okay. Equation one. Let me ask a question. Can I use Fourier transform here to sketch the spectrum of this guy? Can I use the Fourier transform? In other words, can, I, can you tell me if the Fourier transform here is a bunch of impulses? You cannot do that. Why? Because the modulation is what? It's not linear. It's in the angle rather than in the what? In the amplitude. Did you get my point or not? Is this a single sinusoid? This is not a single sinusoid. So you cannot use what? You cannot use the regular Fourier transform to tell me that the cosine is a what? Now, equation one which I will not show you, that's a different course, can be simplified. And this one is EE 567, which, by the way, if you are in communications, I would encourage you strongly to consider taking this class. Clear? If you are in communications. If you are in circus, no. This, 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 this class will give you severe headache. But if you are in, in the UR systems, that class will, will be beneficial to you. It can be simplified to, let's see if you can help me here, x of t equal summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity a sub n j n of beta cosine 2 pi f sub c plus n f m T, close the bracket. I, I cannot ask you if you have seen this equation before or not. I don't know. Have you seen this equation before? You know what the J is? Anybody? Okay. This is called the what? The Bessel function of the nth order. And it's a function of who? Beta. It's a function of beta. And this, this is tabulated, which I will be posting the table shortly on the web so that you can use it in some of the homework problem. Answer me the following question. Now, can I use Fourier transform? Can I use Fourier transform? By the way, remember, this equation is applicable only if the modulation is what? Is a single tone. Did you get my point or not? This equation is only if the modulation is a what? Single tone. In reality, is the modulation a single tone? Well, the modulation is not a single tone. And in reality, you are not going to be able to write what? X of T in a closed format like this and sketch a nice spectrum for it. 
Did you understand what I just said or not? Yes or no? Okay. Help me. Can I use now Fourier transform? Are you? Why? Because this is only in the amplitude. Yes or no? Okay. No response. Okay. How many components do I have? Infinite. Located where? Give me the first one. At n equal to what? Zero. Where is this one located? At f sub c. What is the magnitude? Sorry. What is the amplitude? So when n equal to what? Zero. What is the amplitude? It's a sub, a sub, this is not a sub n, I'm sorry. A sub what? C. A sub C, J. Agree? What is the average power? Clear? Clear? What was it before modulation? AC square over 2. Did it go down? <clears throat> you know for sure that J0 square of beta is what? Is less than 1. Otherwise, it means what? It went up. You cannot do that. Did you get this or not? <clears throat> One more example before we go, <clears throat> before I show it to you. First harmonic. Sorry, I said first harmonic. First side loss. What is the N? N is equal to what? Plus or minus 1. Why is it plus or minus 1? Why? Because we have the what? The upper side band and the what? The lower side band. Did you get this or not? In AM, how many side bands did we create? <clears throat> we created an upper side band and a what? Lower side band. In here, how many, how many are we going to create theoretically? Infinite number of side bands, which means right away, what can you tell me? The bandwidth of an FM signal is much wider than the bandwidth of a what? An AM signal, because the AM will only generate one set of side bands, whereas the FM signal will generate what? Infinite number of side bands. Now, as I will show in just a second, the value of JN of beta as N increases, this one will go to what? will go to zero, which means what? Its effect will become negligible. And I need to truncate the spectrum. Truncate the spectrum, neglecting all the components beyond that point. Are you following me or not? I'm still waiting. What is the average power? First of all, let's sketch the spectrum before you answer this question. Can you sketch the spectrum for me? The spectrum. So this is X of what? F. Can you sketch it for me? Let's sketch it on one side. The other side is what? Is the mirror image. Yes? Sketch it for me. At n equal to zero, what do I have? An impulse? Yes or no? What is it? AC, J zero of what? Bait. Yes or no? Over what? Y over two. Y over two. Cosine, when you take the Fourier transform, you get what? One half delta this, delta that. Yes? Yes or no? Okay. What is the power in the AC, in the FCC? Is what? Is the area under this? Yes? Because this is the power spectral density. Yes or no? The area under this, agree? Multiply by what? Two. Why am I multiplying it by two? So on the left hand side. Yes or no? So what do you get? AC square, J zero square of beta over what? Four multiplied by what? Two. Did you get this guy? Did you get this or not? Okay. Now, at F, the next one. Next one. Where is the next one? N is equal to what? One. Yes? What is the component? And what is this? A sub C over what? 2, J, 1, bait. Did you get this or not? Okay, what is this? This is the first side lobe. The side lobe has what? Two sides, the upper and the what? The lower. Where is the lower one? When n is equal to what? Minus 1. When n is equal to minus 1, <coughs> this is what you have. Now, in reality, by the way, when n is equal to minus 1, there will be a what? A 180-degree phase shift. Did you get this or not? But I'm going to assume that I'm sketching what? 
the magnitude. Did you get my point or not? No response. Yes or no? Okay, let me write this one here. J N of beta equal to what? J minus N of beta if N is what? Even. And J N of beta equal to what? Minus J minus N of beta if what? <coughs> is odd. Clear? So when N is equal to what? When N is equal to minus 1, this one actually is what? Is on this side. But because we are measuring the power, when you square it, it doesn't matter. Yes? No response. Yes? Tell me, what is it? What is the average power? In first side lobe set. Again, when I say the first side lobe means what? The upper and the what? The lower. I'm still waiting. It's AC square J1 square over what? Beta. Yes or no? Over. AC, this one here. What is the power in here? Just this one. There's another one in here. Same thing. Yes or no? What is this? AC square, J1 square of what? Beta divided by what? 4 multiplied by what? 2. Did you get this or not? So divided by 4 multiplied by what? 2 and then multiplied by what? 2. Did you understand why there is 2, 2, 2? Sorry. Why there is 2, 2, 2, 2. <laughs> Did you get this or not? So what do you end up with? Now tell me, uh, by the way, what is the average power in the second harmonic, in the second side law? This one will become what? J2 of beta. You agree? Same equation, but it's what? J2 square of beta. Agree? Now what do I have? AC square over 2 is equal to what? AC square over 2 times what? Plus what? AC square times what? Plus, help me. Why is this equal to AC squared over 2? Because that's the total average power. Agree? Yes or no? So what do I have? That implies what? Summation. Must be equal to what? I'm still waiting. I must be equal to one. Clear? Clear? Okay, by the way, you can write what? AC squared over 2 and multiply this by what? 2. Did you get my point or not? Did I went, did I go too fast or you lost me? You lost me. Okay, concentrate. This is AC squared over 2. AC squared over 2. Yes? Can I write this one also AC squared over 2? So I'm going to what? Divide by 2 and multiply by 2. Can I do that? Then what do I do? I factor the AC squared outside. AC squared over 2 outside. What remains? J squared, J0 squared of beta plus what? 2. J1 squared of beta plus what? 2. Sorry. Times what? 2. J2 square of beta, and so on and so forth. Yes, subscript is only positive, but the negative is the same because you are squaring, it becomes like this. What is your question? I did not hear your question. I answer? Okay, good. Now, what is the bandwidth? How do I define the bandwidth? Let me show you the chart. <coughs> you see the chart? What is this? This is at F sub C. These are what? The first side lobes yes second side lobes third side lobes yes or no are they getting smaller and smaller i need to truncate this spectrum did you get this or not I, let me ask you a question let me ask you a question and you will see this in the final exam definitely 
Is it possible that I don't get the second side lobe at the output? The second side lobe, which is at what frequency? At what frequency? F sub C plus what? 2 FM and F sub C minus 2 FM from the other side. Is it possible that I don't get them? When? Say it again. No, you didn't get my question. You didn't get my question. It's, it, 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 I want you to see this equation. Yes? Is it possible that for a given value of n, I don't show up, the delta does not show up at the output? Yes. When? If the vessel function for a specific value of beta is equal to what? Zero. For, in other words, I want what? Choose beta based on the value of beta such that J2 of beta is equal to what? Zero. That will what? That will say that the, the second side of side lobes will not show up in the final. Will not, will, not, uh, will not show up in the output. Not sure did you get this point. Did you get this point or not? JN depends on the value of beta. So in the final exam, I will tell you what. What is the value of beta that will result in what? In that the second what? The second set of side lobes does not show up in the, in the output of the modulator. Did you get my point or not? Yes or no? I will give you the tables for the J so that you can see it very clearly. Now, one final thing, which is what? The bandwidth needs to be what? Need to be approximated. Why? Why approximated? By truncating. Uh, smaller, uh, sorry, by uh, truncating higher order side lobes. And we end up with what is known as what? The Carson bandwidth. He found out it's equal to what? 2 beta plus 1 times what? F. What does that mean? I want you to tell me what does that mean. By the way, if beta is equal to zero, if beta equal to zero, what is the bandwidth? Or let's put it this way. If beta is a small, beta is small, what is the bandwidth? 2 FM, which is the same as the bandwidth that was required if we use what? AM with what? A single tone modulation. Yes or no? If, it is, if we use AM with single tone modulation, what does the spectrum look like? It would look like what? Two impulses at what? F sub C plus F sub M, F sub C minus F sub M. Agree? And the bandwidth is what? 2 FM. Yes? So in here, that's 2 FM is the what? Is the, uh, is the width of the purse. How many side lobes is he suggesting that you take? You take beta plus what? Beta plus one side lobes. Did you get this or not? So for example, for example, if beta is equal to what? Five then the bandwidth is what? 6, 12. F sub M. Did you get this or not? Yes or no? Which means how many side lobes are you taking? You are taking six side lobes from one side and what? Six side lobes from the other side. Did you get this or not? Okay. By the way, this one, you could also write it as what? 2 FM plus what is beta times FM? Did I define the delta? But did I define the delta somewhere? Where? Here. Yeah. What is delta F? Beta times what? Fm. So what is this? Agree? Agree? Now, in Fm broadcast, Fm radio, broadcasting, what are the values? The values are what? Delta F? Equal to what? 75 kilohertz. What does, one more time, delta F 75 kilohertz, what does it mean? It means the what? It means the maximum frequency deviation from the what? The carrier frequency is what? 75 kilohertz. Did you get this or not? Okay, and the bandwidth? Anybody? For FM, each channel, 200 kilohertz. Notice, by the way, this is a little bit above what? 
above the Carson's rule. Why? By the way, beta is roughly what? Five. If it is two, if beta is five, listen to me, if beta is five, then what do you have? The delta F is what? The delta F is 75. So what do you get? Two times 75 is what? Is 150. Yes? FM is what? This is the highest frequency component in signal. Let's assume it's what? 10K. Are you following me or not? By the way, it cannot be more than 20K. Why? So we are not going to be able to hear it. Did you get this or not? Still, this one is a little bit higher. You agree? Yes, yes or no? Why? Huh? Space between adjacent channels. In addition, keep in mind that the actual what? Actual signal that is being modulated onto the carrier is not a single what? It's not a single tone. Did you get my point or not? It's not a single tone. This is a single tone analysis. Did you get my point or not? Yes or no? No response. Compared to how much bandwidth? Compared to how much bandwidth in AM? 10K? 200K? Yes? What is the range? What is the FM range? 88.1 to what? 108.1 megahertz. You agree? What is the bandwidth? The, the entire band. The entire band. What is the bandwidth? 20 megahertz. And how many channels? Uh, sorry, what is the band of each channel? 200. K, resulting in how many? 100 channels. Is that the same as AM? Yeah. That's the same as AM. In AM, what was the bandwidth, the whole bandwidth? 1 megahertz. And each channel was what? 10K for a total of how many AM channels? 100. Now, does that mean that there are only 100 FM channels in the U.S.? Of course not. Why? Because we are going to what? Reuse the frequencies as we move along. <coughs> clear? Clear? Oh, so that's the FM. The, the penalty that you pay for the FM, it's a what? It's a wide bandwidth. It's a wide bandwidth. <coughs> yes? I don't want you to confuse. This is too much a little bit, but I, just in case. Have you heard about the word spread spectrum? Yes or no? I don't want you to think about FM as a spread spectrum technique. In the spread spectrum technique, you are adding a what? You are adding a spreading code into the what? Into the modulation purposely to make the what? To make the bandwidth what? Wider. To distribute the power over what? over a longer range of frequencies such that the power spectral density becomes what? Lower, and it feels like what? Background noise. Did you get this or not? In here, we did not add a code. There is no code in here. It just the modulation resulted in a what? In a wider bandwidth. Did you get this or not? So even though both of them results in what? Higher bandwidth. But I want you to be able to distinguish between the two. Clear? Okay, good. Now, let's move on. This is again. You can see what you can see the 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 all the things that we discussed right now. I want you to see the following. This is FM. This is PM. Can you tell the difference? You cannot tell the difference. By the way, equation-wise, what? How will it change? Equation-wise for PM, not FM. PM stands for what? Phase modulation. And instead of the what? And instead of the integral, no integral. Did you understand that or not? And change the 2 pi kf into what? Kp, which is the modulation, phase modulation parameter. Kp times what? M of t. Did you get this or not? Yes or no? Yes. Do I need to write it or are you, did you get it? And instead of integral, there is no integral. Clear? Okay, good. Now, and again, as I told you, you will not be able to what? To tell them apart. Now, Let's get now to the important thing, which is what? Analog IQ modulation. We don't care about this. I said important thing. What we care about is what? Is the digital IQ. This is the what? Analog IQ. What does this mean? I have two independent channels, two independent baseband signals. I'm going to modulate a what? A single carrier with double, with opposite phases. One of them is what? Zero. The other one is what? 180 degree. Did you get this or not? It's a single carrier, a single carrier, but I'm modulating what? Two. I am modulating two baseband 
onto what? Onto the same carrier. This is what is known as what? Multiplexing. You are multiplexing what? Two baselines on the same what? On the same carrier. Clear? Okay, so one of them is a what? Is a cosine, the other one is a what? Is a sine. <clears throat> now, I want you to understand one thing. When they talk about the I channel and the Q channel, that does not mean that you are transmitting two signals. One of them is the I, the other one is the what? Is the Q. You are actually what? Adding them before you what? Before you transmit them. Did you understand what I just said or not? You are adding the I channel and the what? And the Q channel. Clear? At the receiving, what do you need? You need a coherent what? A coherent demodulator. A coherent demodulator. One of them is a what? Cosine. The other one is a what? Sine. Now, what can you tell me about the cosine and the sine? They are what? Orthogonal. So when you do the what? When you do the correlation at the receiver, the I does not go into the what? The Q channel and the Q does not go into the what? I channel. And you will be able to separate them together. Uh, sorry, separate them from each other. Yes? What am I assuming here? I am assuming that the sine and the cosine, the sine and the cosine are perfectly phased at what? 90 degree between each other. Did you understand what I just said or not? Any offset, and you have tried it in one of the homework problem. Any offset in the phase will result in what? Some of the I channel will go into what? Into the Q, and some of the Q channel will go into the what? To the I, which means the spectrum will be what? Will be distorted. Clear? Okay. Can you explain to me the spectrum of this is like this? You do understand this, this double sideband. You agree? Why is this one like this? Oh, because it's sine. And when you see the Fourier transform of the sine, you will see what? It's a delta minus delta over what? 2J. So you need to take that into account, the phase. Did you get my point or not? Yes or no? Okay. But we don't care about this. What we care about is what? Digital AIQ. Clear? Which is, by the way, this is the demodulation, the analog IQ. What do we have here? Cosine 2 pi F0 T. This one is what? 2 sine 2 pi F0 T. Synchronized or not synchronized? Synchronized. <clears throat> yes or no? Okay. This is, by the way, is what is referred to as what? In the communications uh, field, they call it what? The correlator. That's the correlator. Are you following or not? When they sketch it in the, in the uh, system analysis, you will see it, what, a correlator followed by what? An integrator. Did you get this or not? But what is an integrator? An integrator is a what? It's, no. An integrator is a what? It's a low-pass filter. A differentiator is a what? It's a high-pass filter. Most of the time, you will see what? Integrator. You will not see what? High-pass filter. Why? Oh, it's noise has a what? Wider spectrum. High-pass filters will allow what? will allow a lot of noise to go through. Did you get this or not? Yes or no? I, I'm going to recover the I channel, and I'm going to recover the what? <clears throat> the Q channel. Clear? No response. Clear? Okay, good. Now, let's look at the other one. What did I do? Digital IQ. The digital IQ motors. And that will get us to the what? To the concept of signal constellation. Signal constellation. Can you zoom back, please, a little bit? <coughs> operator. Dear operator. Nobody is there. Operator. One second. Let me give him a second. Operator. Yes, sir. Hey, can you zoom back, please, a little bit? So, operator is taking a nap. Yes, thank you, sir. Okay. I w don't look at this. Is this the same? Just look at this one. Is it the same as the previous one? What is the difference? The difference is that in the input now, what do I have? I have finite number of levels. Agree? How many levels? Can you tell me how many levels? Four levels. What are they? Minus three, minus one, one and three. Yes or no? Okay. And I'm doing this exactly the same. Now, what am I going to do? What am I going to generate here? I'm going to generate a signal constellation. What do I call this signal constellation? Anybody? Anybody, what, is, what, what parameter is changing? What parameter of the carrier signal is changing? The phase is changing, and the what? Amplitude is changing. Are you following or not? What do we call it? We call it QAM. 
What is this, by the way? What Quam? 16 Quam. 16 Quam means what? We have 16 levels. Notice, by the way, when I say 16 levels, does not mean what? 16 amplitudes. Did you get this or not? It's a combination of what? Amplitudes and what? Phases. Are you following me or not? Okay. Now, these points, are they clean points? What do you mean no? At the transmitter side, at the transmitter side, are they clean points? Can you tell them one from the other? Each one, each symbol representing how many bits of information? Each symbol is representing how many bits of information? Four bits. Two from the I and two from the what? Q. Did you get my point or not? Two from the I and two from the what? Q. These are independent channels. Are you following me or not? Yes or no? Okay, so I have this one. Are they clean or not clean? Why? There was no noise. I will show you how does it look at the receiving side. Now, at the receiver side, what do I need? Let's assume ideal. No noise. Assume there is no noise here. Do I get this? I get this. At the receiver, what do I need to make sure? I need to make sure to sample what? To sample every level somewhere in the what? In the middle. When it is what? When it is peak, peak energy. Did you get my point or not? And then I will decide what? For example, if I decide that the level is what? Is it three? Then the what? The, le the bits are what? What is the three here? Uh, help me. The three on the I is what? One zero. And the three on the... What is it? Here is also what? One zero. So what do I decode the information as what? One zero, one zero. By the way, I can, can I group them together afterward? If they came from the same source, which means what? I applied serial to what? Parallel. Serial to parallel means what? Means the data is coming here. I apply it to a what? S to what? P. Think about it this way. Listen to me. The odd comes in here. The even comes in here. Odd, even. Odd, even. If this one is RB, what is the bit rate here? Uh, it's, it's, it's RB over what? Over 2. This one is what? RB over what? Over 2. Did you get my point or not? This is the same data, but I'm breaking it into what? Into I and Q. But it does not have to be the same data. It could be separate what? Separate data. They are modulating the same carrier at the same frequency, but with different what? Faces. One of them is a sine, and the other one is a what? It's a cosine. Did you get this or not? No response. Yes or no? Okay. This is the case when there is no what? There is no, <clears throat> there is no noise. I want you just to introduce you to the concept of a gray coding. Are you familiar with the gray coding? What is the gray coding tells you? The gray coding tells you what? When you encode the levels, when you encode the levels, you need to make sure that the what? That the nearest level changes with how many bits? Only one bit. Are you following or not? Going from a what? A level to an adjacent level, only one bit is what? It is changed. Why? Reduce the bit array. Why? You are still not answering the question. You are telling me it's to reduce the bit array. I got that. Why? Why the adjacent is more important, the adjacent? Chances are the noise, the chances are the noise will what? Will alter one level to a what? To an adjacent level, not to a what? A level which is far away. The noise is not that bad. Did you get this or not? If the channel is messed up, then it's messed up. Did you get this or not? It is more likely to have one bit in error rather than what? two bits or three bits did you get this or not more likely clear okay help me now what happened what did i introduce here i introduced noise same scenario yes this is what was transmitted what do i call this by the way signal constellation uh question uh this is what we call it what signal con can you read this do I need to write it again, or did you get it? It's called what? Signal constellation. Yes? Compare this with this. <laughs> Tell me, what happened? Is the noise what? By the way, why did the noise move it in circle? Do you see the circle? Why? Because the noise could be what? Positive, or it could be what? 
negative and in all directions. Did you get this or not? Okay. What do I call this? By the way, in here, can you tell them apart? At the transmitter, can you tell them apart? At the receiver, you need to create what is known as what? Decision regions, boundaries. This you will take it in what? In 564, EE 564. By the way, this one used to be the most popular class in the department about some 25 years ago. Right now, it's struggling. I think it's because the title, it says communication theory, and the students, once they use, they see the word theory, they say, what, what is the point? You follow me or not? Okay, but in any case, so they are struggling with this course here. Okay, concentrate, concentrate, please. Do you understand this boundary region? What does it tell you? At the boundary region, I'm telling you that even if the noise was what? Was relatively bad. As long as it does not move the signaling constellation point from one boundary region to a what? Another boundary region, we are still what? We are still okay. Did you get my point or not? And that's boundary region in, in here. Clear? Clear? Okay. Now, the constellation points are no longer consist of what? Single dots for each sample. The challenge, how do we match received IQ samples with their corresponding what? Symbols. Decision boundaries chosen to minimize the what? The symbol errors. Clear? No response. Clear? Okay, good. Now, I want you to see something here. You see the sampling? Is it at a single point or is it fluctuating? This one here. The, the sampling points also is a little bit what? Fluctuating, which means what? There is a jitter in the time circuits. <clears throat> Clear? We need to establish the symbol sync. Otherwise, we are not going to be able to sample it at exactly what? The peak value where, where I can see the energy is, is mostly concentrated. Clear? Okay. Help me now. What, is, what do we have here? What do we have here? This is what? This is, the, so I want you to understand the impact of the symbol transition at the transmitter side. What do I have here? By the way, all of this is what? Is approximation. So I need you to understand. What is this? This is the data. A sequence of what? Plus or minus what? One. Did you get my point or not? I am representing it by what? By an impulse. What am I assuming? The pulse shaping. This is the pulse shaping. What am I assuming? Square, which means I'm generating what kind of pulses? Square pulses. Yes or no? Answer me the following question. What do you get by convolving an impulse with a shape, with a pulse? You get the pulse shifted to where the impulse is what? Located. And hence, I get this one. Did you get my point or not? Cannot hear you. Okay, so I get this one. Now, let's look at it from a frequency point of view. Which domain was this? Time domain. I want you to look at it from the frequency domain. By the way, convolution in the time domain corresponds to what? Multiplication in the frequency domain. Yes? Answer me this one. Where did this come from? What kind of a sequence is this? A random sequence. Do you understand that or not? Cannot hear you. Why are we sending a random se sequence? If I'm sending, listen to me, can I send a sequence 1010101010? Zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero? Does it have any information? No information. The periodicity, the more random the signal is what? The sequence is what? More information it has. Yes or no? If it is a random sequence, does it behave like noise? It behaves like noise. The power spectral density is spread over what? Wide frequencies. Yes or no? What is this guy? What is the power spec? What is the Fourier transform of this guy? The Fourier transform of this guy is the sync function. Yes, I'm looking only at the magnitude. Yes or no? Okay, and what do I get by multiplying this with this? This one is relatively what? Constant. Do you agree? And then I get the same as what? As this one with some what? With some? Can you zoom in the place a little bit? Again, can you zoom in the place? No response. Okay. I did zoom more. <clears throat> Do you see this? This is this, this variation on top. This one is clean. This one there is a, 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 a fluctuation. This is because of this guy. Clear? Yes or no? Now, notice, by the way, did the bandwidth increase? The bandwidth increased, but we need to what? We need to break it into this. Now, what is this? What is the bandwidth? By the way, <clears throat> I want you to understand one thing here. Did we apply modulation or not yet? Not yet. Why? 
because you can see that the spectrum is centered around what? Around zero, which means what? This is just a baseline. Are you following that? But you can see all of these cyclops in there. Clear? What is 1 over t? What is 1 over t equal to? <clears throat> I know it's equal to the band, but what is 1 over t in terms of what? In terms of the rate? That's a symbol rate. If t is the symbol duration, then 1 over t is what? It's a symbol rate. And that's why when they use a symbol rate and the bandwidth, sometimes they use it interchangeably. <clears throat> Clear? No response. Clear? This is called what? Pulse shaping. And which pulse am I using? Which shape? Square. In a minute, we will see that if you use what? If you use some smoother shapes, you might end up with what? You might end up with <clears throat> a, 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 a more compact spectrum. Why? Because the signal is what? It's changing slowly. I will show you that in just a second. Uh, Professor, you have five minutes left. Okay, thank you. This, it can zoom back, please, a little bit. Okay, this is now the impact of what? Of the pulse shaping filter at where? At the transmitter. What does it mean? After I generated those, this one are these, yes or no? I what? I apply them to a pulse shaping filter. Did you get my point or not? What am I going to get? This, by the way, the spectrum of this is this. This is a signal. What am I getting from the I channel and the Q channel? You see this and you see this. Do you see sharp edges? No sharp edges. Yes or no? You don't see sharp edges. Why? Because you use a low-pass filter to, to eliminate all of these a sudden transition. Yes? I want you to see the spectrum. Look at the spectrum here and look at the spectrum here. Why? Because this has to go through a what? A low-pass filter. Is, by the way, is this ideal low-pass filter? It's not an ideal low-pass filter. By the way, if it is ideal low-pass filter, then I will only get what? This. In here, I'm still getting some what? Eee, eee. Are you following me or not? Cannot hear you. No response. Cannot hear you. Okay. The transmit filters enable reduced bandwidth for the what? For the transmitted spectrum. But what is the problem? The problem is that it might lead to what? To intersymbol interference why why intersymbol interference when you apply when you apply something to a low pass filter which is what which is not ideal is this ideal or not ideal not ideal and the output pulse the output pulse will get what smeared let me explain to you a little bit better did this frequency shrunk if the frequency sh if the spectrum shrunk what does that tell you in the time domain the time domain expanded, which means what? The signal is taking what? Longer to appear. You follow me or not? Longer to appear at where? At the output. Yes or no? Cannot hear you. Longer it extend, which means what? If you, for example, if you apply this and you apply it through a filter, low pass filter, what you are going to get is what? Something like this. Did you get my point or not? Now, what is the problem with this? The problem with this is that this portion will interfere with what? With the next symbol. And that is why we call it what? ISI. ISI stands for what? Intersymbol interference. You are interfering with who? With yourself. Did you get this or not? Okay. This is now, I hate charts like this. It's all what? It's all talk. Are you following me or not? It's all talk. Let's go over it but a little bit. The choice of the transmitted pulse shaping is a trade-off between achieving Minimal bandwidth, transmitted spectrum, and minimal what? Intersymbol interference. You need to trade. If you want the bandwidth to be what? Minimal, you are going to sacrifice with the what? With the intersymbol interference and vice versa. Did you get this or not? Okay. ISI is a form of distortion in which one symbol interferes with subsequent symbols, thus making the communication less reliable. ISI is usually caused by what? Multipath propagation or inherent band-limited frequency response of the channel, causing successive symbols to what? To blur together. Blur means what? Combine together and you will see what? Shadows and stuff like that. Did you get this or not? Uh, why is it multipath? In a multipath, because the delay is what? It's changing. The delay is changing is what? One pulse comes and then after a while, another pulse comes, the same pulse, but it comes in a what? In a different path. Clear? In designing the transmitter and the receiver filter, the objective is to minimize the effect. When I say transmitting and receiving filter, we are talking about what? The pulse shaping filter. 
the uh, objective is to minimize the effect of ISI. How do we know the ISI is bad or not? Through what is known as the what? The I diagram. Let me show it to you quickly, and then I will show it to you. Is it, tell me here, is the I bad? Let me show you a different one. One second. Tell me, I good or I bad? This one and this one. This one, is that good? It's terrible. Are you following or not? The eye is not clear. Did you get this or not? When the eye is clear, this one. Is this one uh, nice? Is this one nice? You can see, by the way, these are the effect of the noise. But the eye, the eye is what is pretty nice. Did you get this or not? This one is what? Narrow. The filter is narrow, which means what? You are getting all types of what? The, uh, where is the eye? The eye, by the way, is closing. Did you understand that or not? But I need to show you this in detail. I cannot go too fast on this because the eye diagram is very important. Did you, are you following me or not? Okay, so the last symbol is what? Eye diagrams are a convenient tool to see the effect of the ISI and the sensitivity of bit errors to sample time. What does that mean? Every time what? Every time you have offset timing, you are going to what? You are going to generate what? You are going to eliminate, you are going to introduce effect of what? Of the next symbols and so on and so forth. Clear? I will show you that next time. So sample time choice. Larger eye opening implies less vulnerability to symbol and errors. ISI causes what? Closing of the what? Of the eye. This will be, did he discuss the eye diagram? Forget it then. I don't know what he's talking about, this guy. <laughs> uh, everything important? Huh? Uh, professor, we're out of time. Okay. You are out of time? I'm out of time? Okay, we'll continue next time. I did not cut me off. Cut me off. I did not hear what you said. At the end of the course. Okay, but in any case, this one is it has not been offered for some time. I don't know, but I will show it to you detail next time. The eye diagram, what it implies, and so on and so forth. Are you following me or not? Yes or no? Okay, good. This concludes today's session of EE 5484 on Tuesday, March 11th, 2014.